There are two stories being told today, one in which you look at the stock market and gives you a rosy picture, and the other is the economy, the jobs, the real scenario that looks completely different from the first. Now, I want to tell you what's happening right now on a deeper level. I've got data, I've got charts, I've got the statistics, so let's begin. First things first, Goldman Sachs says basically, we don't think a recession's coming, a 25% chance. Despite the yield curve inversions that have happened, despite so many different indicators, leading indicators, pulling all this data through, Goldman Sachs says, nope, not gonna happen. We now see only a 25% odds of a US recession in the next 12 months, which is well below the consensus. We will see what happens as a result of everything we've had to deal with, but essentially the Federal Reserve is in the process of changing their tune and Goldman Sachs has taken that and running with it. The Fed is all that matters to stock analysts ignoring earnings. Analysts slash earnings estimates raise stock price targets disconnect shows how much markets are focused on the Fed policy. And I've talked about this before, and I'm sure you're aware, but essentially that the Federal Reserve has increased interest rates by 0.25% or 25 basis points. The market was looking for that as the signal that this is the quote unquote pivot that they have been waiting for. Of course, they don't know how long interest rates will remain elevated, but the expectation according to the markets is that they will begin cutting interest rates in 2023. This is at odds. What is so unusual about this is that it's at odds with the soft landing, you know, remember the transitory inflation analysis that they were bringing to us before. So if they think there's gonna be a soft landing, well then why in the world would they need to cut interest rates? Those two things are at a disconnect. That's the unusual factor here. And I hope you agree with me on that, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but I can highlight that and point to this. And we have to realize that something doesn't make sense. Now, the stock market is pricing to perfection. They are looking at the information they have and saying, you know what, even if something bad happens, the Fed is just going to cut rates. They're going to do some more money printing and everything's going to be a OK. Is that really the case? Only time will tell. It looks like they're able to convince the markets that they just need to go higher and higher, even when they don't really say that, don't really say that they want to protect the markets, don't really say that this is what their goals are. The markets are just taking, with, taking it and running with it. China's rally stopped short of a bull market. So we look back uh, in you know, the 2022 timeframe, it was up 20%, basically exactly, and then the sell-off began. And that came into the beginning of November, where things started to go up once again. Here we are, 20%, and we have come off the high. Will this be the situation again? And this is another leg down. I think everybody should be paying attention to what happens in the markets in China. And that might give a little bit of insight as to what we can see in other places around the world. Watch closely for two things, as I've highlighted before, the opening, the reopening of China after three years of lockdown, as well as the scrutiny on the tech industry within China. We could also add in the real estate as well, but those two are the big ones everybody needs to watch. If you're an investor, if you've got a retirement account, 401k, super, or RRSP, I would say keep an eye on it. And you could do that by simply hitting that subscribe button right here on the channel. Hit it down below so that I can bring you the latest and greatest, okay? You don't wanna miss it. Look at the next thing as you see, Kaopeng turns to thousands of robots in bid for profit. This is basically the equivalent uh, of Amazon in South Korea. And what are they doing? Well, as I look through this article here, this is an e-commerce uh, website that they're trying to compete directly with Amazon in South Korea, and they're doing the same kind of thing. It's got the robot vacuum kind of look to it, and they are like in this section of the warehouse, the fulfillment centers, there's only robots. The humans don't work in that area, they're probably too dangerous, getting banged up and so on, but essentially saying that we are going, we're putting all of our funding 
into robots, not into human capital. They're doing it into robots. And here you could see some of the robots that are in use as well, where uh, they get put on, like the packages get put onto these little robot things and they get handed over to a human. And then the human is able, to, like if you could see it right here, so uh, those robots work in their own area. They bring those down to the humans and the humans put them into that one little thing. So it's just like one little step that the human does, which eventually obviously will be replaced as well. The reason I mention this is nothing to do with this particular website. It's got nothing to do with Amazon. This has to do with you. Every job is going towards being replaced. Oh, it's just the low pay. It's just Flippy the robot. No, it's not. This is happening right now with so many in the white collar jobs as well. Robo advisors being one that I point out all the time. Why would a robo advisor be advantageous to a human? Well, the humans don't beat the market. So what you can do is click a couple buttons on your screen or in your app and you say what you want as your goal and it's going to have all the history before it in it and it's going to be able to determine okay well if i do this this and this over a long period of time what is your timeline oh my timeline is 30 years okay over the last 30 years this is what had been attained you can expect this is going to be the same thing and they will invest accordingly and likely will be much better than your average um, financial advisor at the bank so why not robo advisors? These are things that you know somebody might have made a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, and more, making all those fees on top of that off of you. And instead, robo advisor going to be very cheap. I mean, you you know you look at this Dell to cut five percent of the workforce as tech layoffs continue. Just one more company to add to the list. Then you look at what's happening with the inflationary factors. Companies are feeling inflation. People are feeling inflation. This is big. This is this is what's happening today. And despite the fact that they've increased interest rates, they're already talking about reducing that. Isn't this crazy? Look at what's happening with with real estate. Look at what's happening with rent. Have energy prices really gone down? Well, some somewhat, but they're still really elevated from where they were just a little while ago. And wages haven't kept up. London's rental market is in crisis. They talk about this. They say they give a couple stories of uh, some examples, people, uh, landlords wanting to increase the price 27%, another one they said 26%, um, just going crazy really on the, on the rental increases and they can't afford it. So they have to move somewhere else. In some cases, it's better to buy. I'm just showing you here that something so significant like rent, food, energy, these things are extremely elevated and of course that's gonna have an impact on the economy as a whole. So watch carefully for that. It doesn't look like it's going down anytime soon and many have spoken about this and of course I have highlighted here on the channel watch for the second wave of inflation I watch very closely when I go to the supermarket when I'm looking at all of the different prices of things to see what's gone up and I look in the aisles I you know I, I choose produce but I also do look in the other aisles and I keep an eye on the prices of certain things just for my own sake. And then I ask people that I know about the different prices they pay for their same things as well, but also for services. I just have this curiosity and I keep that in my own mind because I think that's important. I think it's important to look at all these things for my own good, you know, my own needs and my own desires, but also I'm doing this for the channel as well because I want to be informed as possible to bring you that information. It's just something that you know, a little anecdote that I wanted to share. Once flush savings accounts are starting to run dry, high prices and the end of the relief programs are eating into household savings, something that I've talked about you know, all over and over again. But you're looking at this, Americans have spent down about 35% of the extra savings that they accumulated. Look, savings rate is down to, what is it, two point something percent. I mean, it's extreme when you think about it because there's no way, absolutely no way, that people are going to be able to pay off their debt. It doesn't matter if it's at the current level of basically 20% interest rates or if they drop down to, what, 17% on credit cards. What about other things like line of credits? Those have gone up as well.
the rates that people are paying, especially if they were on a variable, they really got hammered really hard. And that's something that is not going to turn around anytime soon, even if the Federal Reserve has stopped right here. If that was their last interest rate hike, we still have an issue. Yes, mortgage rates have come down from their peak of 7.3%, I believe it was, now down to under 6%. It is still something that we need to pay attention to because this cannot be resolved. Then you've got the extreme scenario of the rise in homelessness hitting several New England states. Surging rents make affordable units hard to find. Uh, this goes on many different places, not just New England, but you look at it all around. Uh, different areas are experiencing levels that doesn't match up with inflation. Yeah, inflation's going down, but what about one of the most important things, like where you gotta live? So that's why a lot of people are living uh, with others. They're living four, five, six, seven to a home in which you know, that's not the optimal scenario, but that's literally all they can afford. Food prices are up. People are going to the food banks more than ever before. Food stamp usage at incredible levels. It's not a good sign, right? Retailers try to curb theft while not angering shoppers. I have seen just about everything, uh, different examples, different places under lock and key. So it's going to be like going to like a some liquor store in the middle of a bad neighborhood at, in the middle of the night where just to get into the store to go buy something for two dollars you're going to need to be buzzed in is this you know a jewelry store am i buying jewelry is this the way it goes but that's what's happening today and crime has picked up and prosperity has gone down these two are directly correlated and i see that all the time look at these different places around the world different cities maybe one that you live in look at the crime stats look at what's happening with the trends look at what's going on with different types of stores are you getting those payday advance cash money stores opening up is it cash for gold or you know is it dollar stores what is it see those trends and you can actually look those up online as well pay attention okay and then this right here, failure to raise the U.S. debt ceiling would lead to economic and financial catastrophe, according to my friend and yours, Janet Yellen. They are going to raise the debt ceiling. We know that. Come on. Let's be honest about this. It's ridiculous. And you've got a serious issue because the annual interest rate payment on government debt is $850 billion and rising fast. Here you can see it in this chart. Extreme under no circumstances will this be able to actually be recovered. I don't know what they're going to do about it, but <laughs> I, it's so terrible. I mean, just to see how much is going to something so fictitious like the debt, they're not even including unfunded liabilities. None of that's on there, but hey, this is the world we live in today. I wanted to share that information with you. I hope that you found it informative. This type of stuff is not generally covered by most out there. So when you watch these videos, when you give them a thumbs up and when you hit that subscribe button, you're supporting this channel. I do appreciate that very much. But hold on. Tomorrow's video is going to be jam-packed and you definitely want to check it out. So stick with me. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.